Hey guys, so today's video is on how to start a grandfather clock. Some of you might own a grandfather clock or have been given one. Um, it's not super obvious on how you would get this guy going, so uh, maybe it is for you guys, but for those that don't, uh, I'll just give you some tips and tricks and show you how to start a grandfather clock. So here we go. So this model that I have here is um, probably like a 1960s or 70s uh, grandfather clock by Craftline. Um, you can see the works here. This, uh, while well, that was moving because I was just touching that a second ago. You have your balance weights, uh, you have your pendulum, and you have your hands, of course, up here. So the first thing you want to do when a clock hasn't been started a while, you want to make sure it's on flat level ground. Um, if it's crooked, it won't tick quite right and your clock won't work properly. So what we're going to do to get this guy wound, when you look at your counterweights, it has a little chain attached to it. And if I follow that all the way up to the top, you can see there's another little piece kind of hanging down here. This is actually what you need to pull to bring your weight all the way up to the top. And the pressure from the weight dropping is what actually will keep your clock going. So there's three of these. I've done one. There's the second one we just did. Now we're going to go and find the third one, which is up here. There it is right there. So now we're going to pull this guy up all the way. Some people might think that there's a key that you need, uh, really old ones, I guess they're, sometimes you can find key wound clocks like this as well. This one has the chain, which is pretty common. Uh, and then the pulley right now is not moving, or the pendulum I should say, isn't moving. So we're gonna get it started by just gently moving it over and letting it find its way back and forth. Now the movement of the pendulum will start to get the clock ticking. It's on nice solid ground here. So eventually these chains will settle out and it'll find its own pace and rhythm. But uh, yeah, you want to make sure that it is uh, ticking back and forth and doesn't stop. We're going to close the case up for now. So just making sure that the time is set correctly. So it is uh, 3.30 right now, just after 3.30. So that should be the right time. Um, this one chimes on the uh, half and on the hour. So once we get to four o'clock today, it'll probably scare the wits out of me because I'll forget that I wound this up and I'm going to hear a grandfather clock chiming away. But uh, that's pretty much it. Now the main difference between a grandfather clock and a grandmother clock has to do with height. Um, if you haven't heard of a grandmother clock, sometimes people mistake them for a grandfather clock. Basically, if a long case clock is over six feet tall, they generally classify it as a grandfather clock. And anything six feet and under is a grandmother. And I, there's even smaller ones, and sometimes they call them granddaughter clocks. Um, but uh, yeah, so they all look very similar. It's just a matter of uh, height. So yeah, uh, and if your grandfather clock has really, you know, like the pants pulled up, you know, way too high past the waist, that's probably a size of grandfather clock too.